Hi everybody, Steve here. I want to make a video about this watercolor that I recently finished. I'll tell you a little bit about the process. I didn't take pictures as I was working on it. I just wanted to get it done. This is 12 inches high by 29 inches wide. And I'm just using my iPhone, so not totally confident of the uh, color accuracy and all that stuff. Let me turn one more light on here. Here we go. I'll tell you a little bit about my thoughts on uh, this painting, how I was working, what I was doing a little bit differently. Uh, I drew the whole thing out like I always did. The sky, I'll show you, here's the photo. The sky was totally just gray. No distinctive cloud shapes at all. And when I painted it that way, uh, at first it was flat, like you see in the photo. And I just thought it was really boring, so I started to add more texture to the sky, just inventing shapes. And the more paint I added, um, I noticed that it really started to get kind of grainy looking. And I was not happy with that, because to me it was distracting. It really just looks like a watercolor normally looks, but for me it was, it was something I was not happy with. And I was thinking about you know, what do I do now? I don't like the sky because it's got this grainy look to it. The um, the values and the shapes and everything are okay. It's just there was something about the pigment that was not mixing with the surface of the paper really well. It was looking a little bit... Oh, I don't know what you call that. Too much texture, too much um, graininess. So I decided, well, I'm just going to paint this thing and I'm going to work much more quickly. And I'm going to paint this so that the end result will look more like a traditional watercolor. I won't try to make it look quite so photorealistic or hyper-realistic. And so I, um, I worked from the background to the foreground to a large extent. And uh, I didn't add a million little branches, even though I did add a, a, a good amount of detail. I did this painting a little more quickly than I have done other paintings in the past number of years. And as I kept going, starting with looser applications of paint and adding some distinguishing detail on top of those looser applications of paint, I realized, boy, it's starting to look real because the values are right. I think the colors are right. You know, everything feels like the scene should feel if you were standing there, this kind of a damp, wintry day with a lot of humidity in the air. And um, I really enjoyed the process of not working quite so detailed. If you get really close here, here, let me get a, here's a, um, here's a number two um, brush, and I'll show that so that you can see it compared to the, the little corn stalks. It, it, it's a little bit looser, a little bit more quickly done. And of course, that's looking really close. Right now, my camera is a, I don't know, eight inches away. It's my hand. So one of the difficult things about being a realist painter like I am, uh, I have this issue with my eyesight where I'm extremely nearsighted, which means my vision is terrible until I get really close. And then when my vision, uh, when, when I get really close, my vision is exceptional. I see things that most people don't see, and it's hard for me not to want to make everything look perfect very close up. And in this case, it's a little bit looser close up, but when you back away, you know, three, four, five feet away, it looks very realistic. And that's how most people see all things because there are, their eyesight is not, obviously, you know, my um, hyper nearsightedness. So that's, you know, it's not good or bad. It's just something I, I did with this painting. And uh, it, was a, it was a good exercise for me to uh, kind of step back and be just a little more painterly. The end result, again, looks pretty realistic especially because this, this um, road and the rows really give you a heightened sense of, of perspective and depth. And then, of course, in the background, the hills really do recede because their values are lighter and their color is cooler. There's much more of a blue tint. And I was specific about making sure that the edges of this last cluster of hills in the background had a really soft edge to them. So I painted a lot of that wet into wet as I was doing the skies. 
I'll zoom in a little bit closer there. And then I did tiny little brush strokes to, to, just to define it a little bit more. And you can see these background trees. There are some branches, but there's also just blotches. Uh, a good word for that would be scumbling. Here's the, um, the fields. You can see I'm kind of scraping the brush across the surface. I didn't do a, a lot of texture in the road. It's implied, but it's it's just I didn't I didn't draw it out in tremendous detail. Sorry, I didn't make a video where I showed you step by step. I just wanted to get this thing done. I've got some other uh, oil paintings that I recently did, and I'll. I'll hopefully make a video of those. I know this is mostly a watercolor channel, but I do like doing oils, so I, I thought that might be interesting. But for now, this is my latest watercolor, and there's more to come. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.